This next show we're going to talk about also has someone that Sharonda would give the panty draws to, and his name is Duda. <laughs> She loves herself oh. some duty, ladies and gentlemen. And, we, and mm. we've got to summarize that and come back and finish the Ooh. conversation up because B. Avery hasn't seen much of the shy. But um, to keep him in the conversation, we're going to summarize the shy and then come back to something. So, Sharonda, we're going to give it to you first. Your thoughts, your feelings on the very last episode season three of the shy i entitled it duda wins again (laughs) i was was disappointed in the finale i felt like they should have just ended with episode nine and i think that would have been a better finale Mm -hmm. oh i agree that scene with with that scene with uh with uh ronnie getting killed that would have been that would have been perfect perfect. right there yeah like that's that's all you yeah, the mayoral well, election, they, they could have moved that the week before. Exactly, it made that the yeah. last episode. I think that the only thing I did like was they finally explained to us what the heck happened to Tiffany's baby from season two because we were all confused. Like, Tiffany, you were pregnant, and then we just never talked about the child again. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was, you know what I was most disappointed about for the episode? Mm-hmm. I was very disappointed in how they handled Trigg's storyline. It made absolutely oh. no sense. No, no. Yeah. All, yeah. That all season to then be like, yeah, I'll go work for you. What? Mm-hmm. what? It, he laid down so easy. It right. was just like, like they built Trig, they built Trig up like he was going to be this big, um, opposing figure to Duda as if he could step in and be like the new street king against Duda. And at the very end, he becomes self-servient, like Mike Pence is to Donald Trump. I, I wasn't feeling that part either. I and the fact that, that he didn't want to go back to jail, and you do the main thing that's going to land you back in jail, and you're going to trust him that he's not going to turn you in, that made no mm-hmm. sense. And it doesn't make sense for Duda. Hey, Daddy. But it oh. doesn't make sense for him. <laughs> basically not so he doesn't he's not gonna worry about who took my stuff out of the file cabinet because i'm confused yeah. about that. you you didn't come for rose you didn't come for jake you just i i don't understand it don't make no well, sense maybe no, this the is f- thing that gets me right Go ahead. so so and, and and i know sharon's gonna talk bad about me because she's gonna think i'm i'm saying something but you here's gonna the say thing. Something about Imani? it's not just about Amani, but here's the thing we're talking about he's coming to Trig to go run, was it the 63rd Street Mafia? You know, mm-hmm. and, and and to run this gang, the street gang. We know how gangs are. I know how gangs. I grew up in Los Angeles, where you know, right in the height of the whole Crips and Blood thing. There's no way in Sam Hill they are going to allow a gay dude with a trans wife to lead their gang. They will kill this dude in a heartbeat. There's no way. There's no Why gang. Oh, what? Because y'all didn't even know Imani was trans until she said it in the next episode. No, so that's I knew she was trans. trans. No, go back and check the receipts. I called her trans <laughs> in the first episode. I was like, nah, that's what I was like. That's that's a trans. That's a trans woman right there. I knew. I and knew. I'm from LA. You gotta have that gator in full effect, otherwise you can get tricked. And the sad I'm thing trans. is, the sad thing is, I'm the one that brought it to his attention. Mm. I knew did. it was happening. I didn't want to say it. Cause I didn't want people to think I was being homophobic, but I was like, that's a trans dude. But my point still remains. The reality of it is there's no way they're going to let a gay dude with a trans wife run this gang. Cause all the rest he of the gang would be like, no, this dude's a punk and we're going to kill him and take out the rest of their crew. That's just how it works. He said he's not gay. She a woman. Come on, man. You, you can say what you want, but if you're having sex with somebody that has a penis and you have a penis, you are gay. Oh, no, she, she had a penis. She's she trans. She has a penis. She's not. She's a trans woman. Uh, a, you can be fully transitioned. She's not fully transitioned. How you know that? You just said that. <laughs> because when she was in the nightclub, when she was in the nightclub, and Trick got upset with that dude, she said, "You can't be upset with him and be okay with me." That's she can't. She was telling us who she you is know, and what she is. You no, know, she was saying that he was being a hypocrite because that's still a part of her community. So even though oh, you so, that, so she you, is part of the gay community. So they are part of the LGBT community because you just said that he wasn't gay. 
I said because he oh. does not identify as gay because he identifies Amani as a woman. And so because he identifies her as a woman as she identifies herself, he ain't gay. Oh well, gosh. I'm gonna really like this. Over. We've got to have a sex okay. certain of facts and because, because, isn't white. I'm because Donald Trump doesn't identify himself as a racist. But I think all four of us he's can say right. he's a racist. Right. That's not the same, yeah. y'all. Y'all better stop right, playing. Right. With and Rachel Dolatek doesn't identify as white because she identifies as black. And that I guess we are all supposed to be okay with that too. Hold on, so true. Right. Come on, man. I get it. I right get now. where we're going to try to be. I'm trying. I get where we're Not at. Just people pick different. their pronouns and all that, but there's still some straight logistics. I'm, I'm confused. Brand is confused. Let's. It's just this is oh, a Larry normal oh. argument of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so it, but it, it's a it's a woman. No, it, it, it's a man. The transition over to being a woman, right? That, that's currently sleeping with a a biological male. Right, but that's not considered gay because, because the man he, himself a woman. Because yeah, because Brandon, trans, when you say it like that, how does it sound? Y'all are when, foolish. When, okay, when you y'all say are foolish. Like Be open minded. Okay, no, I'm, look, hey, I'm, I'm saying, open minded. I'm not saying you anything's wrong with you it. it. Never it's heard me say anything, anything wrong with against it. it. I'm all exactly. for. I'm all for. Y'all just being difficult. Just no, go no, with no, no. I'm not gonna argue. Y'all not gonna take my piece today. Go no, ahead. No, I'm just gonna understand. No, we we are all for. Do what you want to do. We're happy. We we want you to have your rights. But yeah. there are de there are clear defined definitions to everything because what's to keep me from telling someone I'm seven foot two and I'm five seven? But if right. she is fully transitioned, then I don't understand what the problem is. If she got if she got there's no problem. If if that is the case, there is no problem. If right. that is the case, but what Larry is arguing is she hasn't fully transitioned yet. And so that's where I'm at. So she has a penis, and they both have penises. Are sleeping they together. How do you know that? How do you know that? If 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 I trans fully transition over to being a woman, mm -hmm. but then I decide to date a male, I'm not gay. Because you identify as a woman. No. Okay. Okay. So what if so 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 what if I transition because you transitioned woman, because you what if I transitioned to a woman then I date a woman am I now gay? Yeah, well, now <laughs> so, I say, it's not just confusing say, to us. I don't know. I you say it's yes. not just confusing I, to us. No, no, no. I say yes, but I was gonna say you know, um, Kylie and them raggedy mama. Uh, Caitlin, she dates women, but she doesn't consider herself to be a lesbian. Well, see, see, so that's what, what we're say? saying. She she see, that's what we're saying. We need a well, concrete I definition. Trying, I was trying to be difficult because it doesn't matter. They said in the show, okay, Trig said that he sees Amani as a woman, and because he sees her as a woman, and he is a man, then he is not gay because she is a woman. So y'all giving me all these hypotheticals and these extra situations to stress me out, to steal my joy, to make no. me not be a Christian today. No, no. I'm not having it. No, 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 nobody's doing that. We're just saying we want now, a Larry, clear. Larry did a bad one. Okay. No, no. <laughs> Larry <laughs> Larry <laughs> Larry <laughs> me? Yeah, me? Larry. Let me, I, 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 Larry, I, I don't know. Girl. I don't know me? if you see it, Larry, but your background is turning from purple to red. You got to fix them lights, bro. It was purple. Now it's like a red haze going on behind you. <laughs> and, and, and just to be clear, anybody can live whatever life they want to live. I was just <laughs> trying to get clarification. Right, that's right. And that's, and that's all we're, that's where I'm at with it. That's where I'm at with it. Like, I, so I'm happy for you. Thing. If I, so, so let me ask you this. If you meet, if you meet a guy and he says, oh yeah, you know, you think he's a wonderful person. Seems like he's a great dude. You guys are having fun, about ready to get it in. Then he tells you after you guys have been dating for a few weeks and you made him do the whole three week wait till you smash deal. And then he tells you, Oh, yeah, you I used to be a man. I mean, I used to be a woman and now I'm a man. You're okay with that? You're looking at it like, Oh, you're just a regular old dude. You're okay with that? 
I don't know what that pain do. She said, Does it matter? I that would matter for any what? Yeah, it matter. <laughs> what your pain doing? <laughs> I, that matter if you were born a man like that's just that's just general but if my parents are watching right now i don't have sex i am abstinent i am okay. oh my god no. wait, yeah. wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute after, after you just confess your lust for the guy on on lovecraft country then you call duda then you call duda your daddy and then you're gonna say if your parents are watching Yes, I can still oh, lust after people. Man. That don't mean I gotta bang them. I still lust after people. Well, here's the thing: I don't have a problem with 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 anybody yeah. and their sexual orientations or their sexual persuasions, as long as it's a consenting adults doing what they wanted. I have no problem with that. I don't want anybody to think that I'm some homophobic. I have no problem with it. Do you live your life and be free? But I do have some questions that never seem like they're fully answered about about what is what because there are some clear things there are biological males biological females and there are associations for each and mm -hmm. just because you don't want to be associated with something doesn't mean that you're not that if i i can't go kill someone and say i'm not a murderer you know i can't go i can't go and, and work as a doctor and say i want to be considered a lawyer well you I might mean, you might can in trump's america you might can in Trump's America. We've seen worse. <laughs> I can't go fool Rachel Dolacek and say, no, nah, I'm not black, I'm white, and start checking Caucasian on my census uh, form. I can't do that. I, You know, I mean, I am what I am. But was, you know? but was she not doing that, though? And didn't nobody know until she told people? I mean, I'm just saying. Y'all didn't even know the girl was I knew. Uh, we knew. We knew. We knew on the we first knew. episode. We saw her. I was like, that's a dude. Yeah, yeah we knew. We, we knew. No, I'm talking about Rachel. Since y'all want to put all these hypotheticals up in here, <laughs> y'all didn't even know Rachel wasn't, uh, wasn't black. So what I'm saying is, that is fine. Y'all can do y'all hypotheticals. But for the sake of this show, because I, Imani identifies herself as a woman and Trig identifies as a man who is in love with a woman, then he's not gay. Because he said it. And that's his business. By the way, Sharonda, you might can check your cash app if it hasn't transitioned to PayPal because someone said they sent you something in it. But since that cash app really ain't a cash app because I don't call it a cash app, I'm calling it PayPal. It might not be nothing in it. Well, let me so let me let me say this. Sweet November oh, just said. Oh, thank you, Boo Thing. Let me let me say this about let me say this about people like someone like Trig saying I don't identify as gay because I look at so and so as a woman or whatever. I, I think that this person is part of the reason why he's probably a a, a sadistic killer that murders people without any second thought is because he has all this pent up you know aggression and anger and everything else because he's not true to himself. If he was true to himself and just acknowledged that he's actually a gay man and he's with a trans person and he accepts his homosexuality, he'd probably be much happier as a human being and be a higher functioning human being by being just an out gay man. Instead, he's closeted and angry and vicious and taking it out on other people in the world. And, and no, I, he's I think he'd be better you off say he's closeted. Really it's, because of, it's because of the conversation right here. It's because, because people want to assert their own ideals. Well, if she was biologically born a man, she's going to be a man in my book. And because no people just don't want to accept people for how they accept themselves, then this is why he reacts the way that he does. This is why, as a black man, that he can't even process just going out with his woman without having to deal with the altercation like this, because this is how black men think. And the black community I, is so homophobic. I don't have a problem with him being out with her. Because of these I don't have a problem with him being out with her. You just, but you won't even respect her to say that she is a woman the way that she identifies herself. That's the she's problem right there. Woman, yeah. so much, but she's a woman. She's a woman. She's a trans woman. 
But she's a woman. Because to a be honest, a lot woman. of these people there's did not know. There is, no, there is a difference. I, no, I, I, I don't respect both, but there's still what? a this difference. Is, this, is, this is the problem why I was even mad that it even came out that she was a trans woman. Because all these people weren't even thinking that she was trans to begin with until it came out in the next episode that she was actually trans. Then everyone would be like, oh my God, why is, what is Lena's agenda again? Yeah, everybody was just lusting after this girl in the whole episode prior. Then when you find out she's a trans woman, then all of a sudden it's a problem. I, I just, I, I can't. First of, I, I have never said I had a problem with her. I've never even said that she wasn't attractive. I said, I've said that she, I said before, attractive trans woman, still a trans woman. That's just the way it is. There, there, we are certain things. I am a cisgender, you know, black male. That is what it is. I am what I am. I'm not running away from it I, or, or to it for that matter. I just am what I am. She is a trans woman. She is what she is. It doesn't, you don't get to pick, you can, you can say what you want, but you only get to pick so much. You don't get to say, oh, I'm just a, I'm just a regular biological woman. You're a trans woman. You're not you. You weren't born a certain way, just like I wasn't born. But I can't. I can't go be transracial and say I think I want to be Hispanic now and say yeah, I'm. I'm gonna go and and, and I'm gonna identify as Hispanic because I love the culture and I want to transition over there. And then say, well, you know, you have to. You have to respect me as an Hispanic person because that's what I say I am. That, I mean, it well, just it's okay. not reality. We're gonna table this there that discussion until I get someone from the LGB community up here, maybe it'll be even lean away. And then we can revisit this because- Just so you know, I respect trans people and I have no problem with them. I just think that there are certain things that are based in reality and certain things that are not. You don't just get to say, I'm gonna be the same as every biological woman. No, you're not because you're not. And that's what it and, is. Like, I can't and, go transition and say, I'm gonna be the same as everybody else because I'm not. And there are some women that support the movement that are not all that thrilled about a trans woman coming and saying that they are a woman because they don't have a period the same way that some of the regular born biological women have a period. There are certain things that they don't go through biologically that some women, they don't want to hear that from them, but they are happy that they are doing what they're doing is what we're saying. That's But, but y'all are trying to mansplain to Amani like if she sees herself as a woman, what is the problem? She sees herself as a woman. It's it's no point. I'm not gonna argue with y'all. I'm just gonna keep my peace. I'm gonna respect Imani and her wishes to identify her as a woman. Okay, because that's if, how. If she says she's. I mean, I I've said the same thing. She's she says she's a woman. I'm respecting her as such, but there is there is a. That's just one of those You're things that if someone she's a trans woman. She's a woman. Yeah. For instance, do you do you do you? Now let me ask you this: If you if if some if somebody is a trans woman or man for that matter, do you feel that they have? And let's say they fully transition, do you feel that they have an obligation to tell someone if they meet somebody on the street at a nightclub in a grocery store, or wherever? Do you feel that they have an obligation to tell that person that they have gotten involved with that they are trans? I mean, I think that's a conversation you have a couple of days later, but I don't think it's an obligation to tell somebody that on a first right. date. Now, a couple days later, but do you feel that they have an obligation to tell them? It's their business if they want to or not. I think that if you're wanting to pursue something serious with someone, you will want to be you will want to be as candid as you want to be because you will want that person to love you for who you are and the choices that you have made. So, do you think they're obligated it's, it's, to tell? I them? mean. I think that if they want to build a solid foundation and be honest and open with someone, I think you should always be truthful to your partners, no matter what it could be. You, it's so people me, who so out here have, got STDs and smashing people. I think they obligated to tell people they got an STD, but they don't do I'm it. I'm not comparing. I'm not comparing trans people to STDs, so I'm not going there. So but, what I am, but, gonna, but, but you just compare. You just compare being trans. Or being gay, you brought up racism. You brought up wanting to be a different culture or a different race. So why is it when I did the exact same thing that you just did about ten minutes ago, now it's a problem? Because because, because being transracial, because being transracial is, is a closer is a closer equivalent to being trans transgendered. No, and so you just yeah, even some people to can look at it as not being point. a negative. I think some people can look at being transracial as not a negative thing, whereas I think everybody Boy, looks Brandon, at it. Me and you ain't going to never talk again. We, we, we sorry. You know what? Me, Larry, I love you. We're going to do a show together, just me and you. 
We always agree. We just gonna argue the whole time. This is all we gonna do. No, all the time. Me and Larry, we do this all the time. Okay, we sorry. We sorry. We sorry, y'all. Okay, now, now, Brandon, there, there's. Do you, Brandon? Do you know who Lala Anthony is? Cream? I'm sorry. I, I don't really What's your favorite flavor? Huh? I'm not a dessert person. I don't get excited about ice cream like everybody does. <laughs> I was trying to find some common ground. I'm going to go watch the RNC. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. And, and y'all believe that boy going to watch the RNC. You should really believe I'm seven foot tall. But, Brandon. I don't like cookies and cream, but. <laughs> I like lime sherbet, by the way. You know. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> All right, my computer dying. So b- before before we get out of here, let's finish up with this. Is anybody sad that they didn't mention Dominique and what's going on with Emmett getting married to Till? They just dropped that whole. They didn't mention. They didn't foreshadow what's going to happen next season. Um, did anybody felt like they should have done that in this last episode? But why did we even have to get to that point? They tried to make it seem like Dominique and. And Emma getting married is this happy thing, and I'm just like, no, this is foolishness. Like, you mean you mean out, like you're getting married based on the lie, and she just falling for it. And I like when the therapist was basically like, "Why are y'all trying to prove to us that you deserve to get married? If you want to get married, get married. But you trying to prove all this stuff, like it's just not meant to be. And I just feel like." Them not telling him or giving him the counsel that he should have told Tiffany what happened with Dom, because obviously Dom was not happy that he was getting married. She definitely yeah. wanted to tap that again. She likes mm-hmm. him. So it's gonna be a problem. And, and then you know, told her. every day, so you just working with temptation every day. You saw every her booty. He ain't finna tell her no. He ain't gonna tell that girl no. Now, do do you feel like the mama had an obligation to say anything to Tiff? No, because that's not her business. That's for him to tell her. That's none of her business. They ain't got nothing to do with me. That's so what, what he needs to tell Tiffany himself. So you would be comfortable if Tiff found out that the mama knew before the marriage and didn't say a word? First of all, that's her blood, okay? I ain't got to tell you nothing. That's my son. His <laughs> little right here behind needed to tell you, Okay. <laughs> No, I don't think it's not her place. It's not her place. I'll tell you, the thing that made me feel bad was when uh, when Tiff was asking Everett's, uh, Emmett's mom, should I feel like this? Should I, should, it be this uh, should I be this nervous or something? She was like, I don't know. I've never been married. And I was like, whoo, you know? Right. Man. I felt, I felt that. I mean, also, too, this, okay, can y'all just tell me from a man's perspective about this? It oh, really- now you want to hear us for, as a man. A minute ago, we were mansplaining stuff. Now you're oh, asking yeah, 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 definitely were mansplaining. I still stand by that. But I just want to know, <laughs> as a man, when he kept saying the reason why he wanted to marry Tiffany, this whole thing about loyalty came up. You're just so loyal. And I'm just like, is that really a quality, though? Because you're saying loyal as in you put up with all my stuff. You put up with me cheating on you time after time, getting other people pregnant, like doing all this crazy stuff to you. Oh, that's kind of whack. Yeah, I was just like, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I think was going on in his mind. I'll tell you what I think was going on in his mind. I think that when he slept with Dom, he didn't really want to. He did it because that is what he knows to do. And his and his, you know, physically, he just he got caught up in the moment. But I don't think he wanted to do it. I think emotionally. He wanted to be faithful to Tiff, and he just fell short in that moment. So I think what his thought was is that if I just have a real commitment with her, if I'm married to her, and I can and I have that to hold on to, then I have a reason to say no. So when when Dom comes up and tries to get with me, or when some other woman tries to get with me, I have I have the marriage I can hold on to and say no, I can't do that. I'm married. You know. Mm-hmm. When, when you're that, just dating, you don't necessarily have that to hold on to. And I think that's what his thought process was. True. I mean, I can understand part of what you're saying, but that never works out properly. You you start out, you hold out how you start out. And he's starting out very, very wrong. And for me, I think he smashed her with the intent of thinking it was just going to be sex, no emotion involved. And next thing you know, you look up, damn, they both like each other. That's what I, I mean. Honestly, I thought he... 
He thought he was going to be able to smash her. It was just going to be sex. No emotions involved. Then when he went back to her and she acted like she wasn't interested, he started feeling some kind of way. Then we seen the daddy pop up flirting with her. He felt some kind of way. And then we start seeing that she likes him too. So it's going to be a problem. I don't well, think here's going to be the interesting part. Trying to smash the daddy to get back at him. Here's what's going to be interesting: is we're going to see we're going to see her show up next season. She's going to be pregnant, except we're not going to know if it's going to be if it's going to be uh, image image baby or or Darnell's baby. And a DNA test isn't going to make it all that much clear. So okay. I don't know. It's we'll going to be it. interesting yeah, because what happens if she shows up and she's pregnant, or she just shows up with a baby? And all of a sudden now, Tip is like, yo, uh, congratulations. And she's like, yeah, congratulations. I need that child support, hmm. you know? All right, so let me, a problem. let me finish this up so we can get Brandon back in this conversation. Boy, Brandon, I tell you, I've been eating my popcorn too, brother, just you know sitting back, <laughs> sipping on orange drink and, drink and eating popcorn. And boy, I was about to just take my headphones off. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like she lost a little weight though, because you know before she was always looking like she was a cupcake away. These last couple episodes, she looked like she was a little bit more fit. She still looked, she still looked soft, but she looked like a little bit more fit. Why oh, are you man. always on women's appearance? I, I ain't about to get into this. Before. I'm not. I love. I you love. Just, no, I love you always, you always diss black women who are thick, who are not a cupcake away. I just you did the same thing to Mercedes on P Valley. You said the same thing about her, and she yeah, said, because she, Italian, "Okay." I didn't say anything bad about Mississippi. The the okay. skinny black girl. Okay, Mississippi is not skinny. Mississippi has a little bit of everything. She was black girl skinny. Stop it. Oh, you know, see, that's no. You talking about black girl skinny? No, she's she's not black girl skinny. She's but, just she's but, fit. but Lala, a cupcake away from being fat. Come on, she's y'all. Fit. You always do that. You always do that. What? Well, well, Sharonda, I would just like for you to know you have a super fan here who says, Sharonda, if I stumble on a thick, beautiful woman like you, even if I was married, I wouldn't be able to resist. Oh. Yeah. We gon' we gonna be respectful to marriage, okay? Mm. But I appreciate mm. that. Oh, I'm leaving that alone. I'm leaving that alone. To be unfaithful. <laughs> but thank okay. you. Okay. Th- 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 this, let me tell you something. This live this live Ooh. stream got really out of hand quick. I lost <laughs> all control of the lasso. I lost the steering wheel. Man, the brakes don't went off the damn bus. We almost always we almost off the bridge. Last question about the shot, then we moving I, on. I tell you, Lamont, I'll tell you what we need. We need a little bell, like one of those round bells in between boxing <laughs> rounds. Cause you know, we need we need some way to get Sharonda to stop because she gets so out of control. Man, anyway, look, 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 look okay. Sharon, the first question go to you, and then we're gonna finish this off. I just couldn't help it, Sharonda. Brandon, I had no idea, man. I had no idea. I had no idea. We shall prosper. You're not gonna steal my joy today, Larry. You're not gonna do it. I will let you. I cannot get enough of her, man. Yeah, so Sharonda. If there's going to be a season for the shy, where would you like to see it go? I just want stability, right? I just want everything to make sense. I want. I think where season three went wrong is I think that they were just trying. I think they felt that in order to kind of overcome the departure of Jason Mitchell and also with Tiffany Boone, oh, we got to be shocking. Like we got to do something drastic. No, like y'all had enough good stories. Like I think one of the best storylines that they did have was Keisha's storyline for the season. And I think that's where the season was at its strongest when they focus on that, even though it did take a little bit too long to, to get to Keisha and what the heck happened to her. And then some of the things with when they found her, it just didn't match up medically. But I think that they just need to reroute themselves into these main characters. Make the boys funny. Like I want more of the boys just being happy. I just want to see our young black men happy, having a good time. They Little can Wave doesn't like that. young black men. That's why you're not going to see that. Every black male that's in there has is is a horrible human being. Just about. No, they hmm. not. Papa not no, I mean, just the Papa way she likes them. She's all tragically flawed to the point that you don't like them. 
well, I just want to see happiness for these young black men. I do well, want there, them to put some we respect. Agree on. I want them to put some respect on Sunny because it just doesn't make. I, so how does Sunny just all of a sudden out of nowhere Disappear. he couldn't afford the rent? It makes no sense. We don't see Sonny. There's no confrontation between Sonny and Emmett. And right. I thought that was just really dirty because that's why I never supported um, him, Emmett, having this restaurant because you literally stole this man's dream who mm -hmm. really tried to give you a better life by giving you a salary, benefits to take care of all your raggedy kids. <laughs> I don't understand. I think that was just very disrespectful in how they handled the whole handled the whole departure of Sonny or to make it seem like he's not a character that we actually did care about. So I just right. want to see them respect the characters, respect the talent that they have on the show, and just really like hone in on the writing and just have it make sense. Like don't just be introducing storylines and then nothing else happens, or you build a character like Trig up to do something that's not in his actual character to do like going to work for do that. It just doesn't make sense to me whatsoever. So I just, I just want them to stop trying to shock and do all of this stuff. And you can write diverse characters into the show. It just has to make sense. And when this, it comes off that you're checking a box instead of it actually just being woven so intricately into the plot with the other characters that you don't even think to question it. I just think they really need to get back to the basics of good storytelling of good writing and just really do right by this talented cast that they do have. Well said. Larry, what would you like to see happen if there's a season four of The Shy? Good point, Sharonda. Um, you know, to be honest with you, that's a difficult one because I'm not sure I want to see a season four of The Shy, to be perfectly honest with you. Mm. I mean, when this season was over, I really felt like a sense of relief, like, good, it's done. And Wow. I was I was not really I, I wasn't left off thinking like, oh, man, I wonder what they're going to do next season. I was really just sort of relieved like it's finished. And hopefully, you know, I mean, I'm not I, I'm not going to say hopefully they don't bring it back. They I mean, I, all these people need jobs and whatnot. So I'm happy for them if they get them. But if they bring it back, cool. If they don't, cool. Either way, I'm, I mean, if they if they do bring it back, I'll be honest with you, man. If it's the same old friggin' just crap where it's just every – Every black male in there, every straight black male in there is just has a really negative, you know, fatal, tragic flaw that makes you not like them in a, in a really a terrible way. I'm not sure I'm going to watch it again because mm. I'm just I'm tired of seeing. I know Lena Waithe is a successful producer and writer in Hollywood. And I understand that she has an agenda that she wants to promote, the, you know, uh, women. She wants to promote the LGBT, you know, lifestyle. But you don't have to do that at the expense of your own black men. You just don't have to do it. And I'm tired of seeing it. We get enough of that bullshit from white Hollywood. If black Hollywood's going to do the same shit, I'm not going to support them. I'm just tired of seeing it. Hmm. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that will conclude the shot. Now we get me and Brandon back in the conversation. <laughs>